Well, in February, Israel and the world lost a champion with the sudden death of Rabbi Yaquil Eckstein, founder of the International Fellowship of Christians and Jews. As CBN's Chris Mitchell explains, Eckstein's daughter, Yael, is carrying on the family legacy. Many knew him as the ultimate bridge builder. Rabbi Eckstein started the International Fellowship of Christians and Jews in 1983. Since then, it's generated more than one and a half billion dollars to help Jews in Israel, the former Soviet Union, and more than 58 other countries. In a video message taped shortly before his death, Eckstein charged his daughter, Yael, with the mantle of his ministry. Watch over this ministry. Feed it, cultivate it. Don't let anyone say it's not of God. Yael says her dad left a rich and prophetic work for her to lead. Yael says she's grateful for the many prayers helping her make the transition from grief to building on her father's legacy. Chris Mitchell, CBN News, Jerusalem. Well, Yael Eckstein joins us now. It's a pleasure to have you on the show. Thank you, Gordon. It's What's wonderful to be back. What's it like for you to see video like that of your father praying for you? <sighs> it touches me, it moves my spirit. It's something that's real. I believe the soul is a lot more wise than our physical beings. And I think just as my father was a vessel that God worked through his entire life to do good in this world. God used him as a vessel to send me a personal message of strength and encouragement and hope even before he knew he was going to pass. Did he know? Because it seems he's doing a transference. It's, it's similar to Moses and Aaron. There's a you know, lay hands and, you know, give, give your mantle uh, to the next generation. Do you think he knew? I think his soul knew. I don't think in a conscious way he knew. Mm -hmm. The day that he died, he woke up, he prayed, he drank coffee, he read the newspaper, and he died. I call it uh, the death of the righteous. But do I believe his soul knew that this was coming? When I look back at so many things that he did to prepare us to prepare me for such a time as this. Um, yeah, I think his soul knew. Okay. Well, let's talk about the future and the present. How, how's the fellowship doing? Thank God. <laughs> Thank God we are stronger than ever before. In the past five months, um, I recognized immediately, I said, you know, for the funeral and for the Shiva period of mourning, I'm Reb Eckstein's daughter. I am not any kind of executive, I'm mourning as the daughter, but as soon as I step into the office, I need to put my emotions to the side mm -hmm. and do everything I can in order to ensure that this ministry only gets stronger. And uh, in the past five months, we really have gotten stronger. We're around 1.5% ahead of our projected budget. We've actually seen historic things happen in the past five months. The Jewish community has reached out their hand to say, we wanna stand with you, Yael. We wanna stand with the Christian community who's doing so much good across Israel. Wherever you throw a stone, you see that there's a fellowship project there, a biblical project, helping the orphan, the widow, feeding Holocaust survivors, providing clothing to every single orphan, bringing Jews on Aliyah from the biblical land of the north. Everywhere you look, the fellowship, Christians are there in a practical, tangible way on behalf of the fellowship that we get to say, this is a gift of love from Christians around the world who stand with you. And the Jewish community now, Gordon, it's amazing to see, is not only recognizing that, but they're appreciating that. And they're not only appreciating that, but they're partnering. That's a real change, because your father went through a lot of opposition from the Jewish community when he founded the fellowship. Uh, it, how, how, has the, how has the opinion changed and then I guess more importantly, why has it changed? Yeah, well, that's, that's a great question, and you know better than anyone because your father was uh, one of the cornerstones of the fellowship. My father attributes... They were dear friends. Yeah, good friends, and they, they shared in this 
but was then taboo, brand new, and often very controversial vision of uniting Jews and Christian in shared brotherhood, communication, respect, uh, mobilizing the Christian community to stand with Israel in prayer and in action. That was radical, Ben Gordon. That was radical. And so when that I... was the right thing. Amen. And that's why God blessed it. But when I look back, I, I kind of put this era of Jewish-Christian relations in three very um, unique boxes. At first, it was my father going on behalf of the Christian community to the Jewish community and saying, we have friends to the Jewish community, wake up. For the first time in history, we have friends. Let's reach out our hands and return. Let's cultivate this. Let's invest in this. Let's really believe in this. And he was ostracized. He had to stop his Bible, going to Bible study classes at the local synagogue. My sister's bat mitzvah, he was totally humiliated and he wasn't allowed to go up and pray because he works with Christians. And it was a foreign concept that the Jewish community was terrified of. Once, with a lot of help from your father, um, on Wings of Eagles began, and with the crisis of bringing Jews from the former Soviet Union home to Israel, suddenly the Christian community, in a tangible way, said, we want to be part of this, a biblical prophecy coming yeah. to fruition of bringing Jewish people home. Suddenly, when my father came and said, okay, this isn't just speech, but it's action, the Jewish community said, okay, they're helping us, okay. And I think now, Gordon, what my father saw was the very beginning of the third stage, that I think through President Trump standing with Israel so strongly, moving the U.S. Embassy to Jerusalem, recognizing the Golan Heights, fighting Iran that they won't become nuclear, suddenly the Jewish community is waking up and realizing what our fathers said 37 years ago, this isn't about money. This isn't about being a humanitarian organization. This is bigger than this. This is a strategic partnership of God. How good and pleasant it is when brethren dwell together in peace. And then you see it, how it has an effect also that the fellowship's the largest humanitarian organization in Israel, helping 1.4 million people in need. But also that this support, President Trump isn't supporting Israel because of the Jewish community, He's supporting it because of his evangelical followers, that they say this is a core value to us. And we're seeing in every way now, Gordon, how the Jewish community is waking up to this, how they're recognizing this, and they're appreciating it. And so it's just inspiring for me to see. This is what I say is a testimony to my father's success. It doesn't have to do with dollars raised. It has to do with the vision, the mission, taking on a life of its own. What's your vision now? What, what, what do you see in the future? Well, I see... Um, I see the fellowship really clearly defining what it is we do and so that we could do it even better. When my father started the fellowship, there was no organization bridging Jews and Christians. And so the mission statement was simply to bridge Jews and Christians and transform 2,000 years of hate and mistrust into a new relationship of love and appreciation and communication. A testimony to my father's success is that there are so many other ministries doing this now. The fellowship doesn't need to be in every single place, focusing on every area of Jewish-Christian relations. Our niche, what we have been blessed to be able to do so effectively, is be part of biblical prophecy coming to fruition through humanitarian aid, being that voice of Christians on the ground in the 5,500 bomb shelters that we've built, in the former Soviet Union to Holocaust survivors, to the orphans, to... I was just in Sterot on the border with uh, the Gaza Strip, that they get endless rockets attacks yeah, it's a rocket there. town. And I went to an elderly club that the fellowship built, and an elderly woman came to me, a Holocaust survivor, and she said, before you built this club, I didn't leave my house for nine months. I was too weak, and I had nowhere to go. I had nothing to live for, nothing to leave for. And now she was dancing, she was laughing, she was happy. This is a testimony of how much Christians love and stand with Israel. Well, may the bridge your father built become a super highway. <laughs> Amen. Amen. May, may be. Something I'm realizing, though, Gordon, that, that mm. you know as well, is that it's not a given that this is going to continue. That we've gotten to this place in history where Jewish-Christian relations are strong, but dare we think that this is a given for the next generation and stop investing in emotional, physical, spiritual prayers to ensure that this love, this partnership is passed on to the next generation. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, we have to do our part in our generation 
to make sure that the legacy that we have received not just goes on to the next, but grows into the next generation. And how do we do that? And you have to be very intentional. It can't be by accident. You can, you know, you have to be very intentional. This is uh, a good thing. This is the right thing to do. Let us endeavor to do it. Amen. All right. Well, thanks for being with us. Thank you, Gordon. If you want to learn more about the work of the International Fellowship of Christians and Jews, go to our website at CBN News.